Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at properties of kites. So as we're looking at kites, again, a kite is a special kind of quadrilateral. And the special property dealing with a kite is that it has two pairs of congruent sides. So if we look at drawing out a picture of a kite, a kite ends up looking something like this. The two pairs of congruent sides are consecutive sides, so these two short sides on top are going to be congruent to each other, and these two longer sides on bottom are also going to be congruent to each other. Along with having two pairs of congruent sides, we're also going to have one pair of congruent angles. And the pair of congruent angles are going to be the ones that separate the non-congruent sides. So this obtuse angle in here is separating these two non-congruent angles. And same thing on the other side. Those two angles are going to be our congruent angles. Our next property is that the diagonals are perpendicular. Remember, we use that upside down T to mean perpendicular. So if we were to draw in these diagonals where they intersect, it, it would create a whole bunch of right angles. Our next property also deals with the diagonals, and the diagonals are going to bisect the angles around the outside of our figure. And our last property, again dealing with the diagonals, the longer diagonal is going to bisect the shorter diagonal. So if we were to draw in those diagonals, This longer diagonal is cutting that small diagonal into two congruent pieces. Now notice that our big long diagonal is not being dissected. It's just the diagonal that connects the two congruent angles that ends up getting bisected when we draw those diagonals in. So in this picture we're taking a look at a kite and we're given two angles within the kite but we're missing some of the other angles. So what we're given is this top angle is 73 degrees and this bottom angle is 65 degrees. Now as we look at how our kite is laid out, here's a pair of congruent sides and here's a pair of congruent sides. So we're missing the angles that separate those non-congruent sides. And if we use our properties, this has to be our pair of congruent angles. So this angle and this angle have to be exactly the same size. So I'm going to call both of those things x. And then if we use what we know about a quadrilateral, those angles inside of a quadrilateral have to add up to 360 degrees. So I'm going to start adding these angles together. So we get x plus x plus 73 plus 63 equals 360. What I'm going to do on the left hand side is I'm going to combine like terms. If we take x plus x, we get 2x, and if we take 73 plus 65, we get 138 equals 360. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 138 and subtract it over to the right-hand side. So if we do that, we get 2x equals 222, and then our last step is going to be to divide both sides by 2. So each one of our missing angles within our kite is 111 degrees. In our last example, we're given a kite and we're given a few measurements within that kite. But what I want to do is I want to find the length of AB and I want to find the length of BC. So I'm going to label those. I'm going to call AB, that'll be our X, and BC, let's call that Y. In order to find these lengths, we're going to have to use the idea that the diagonals are perpendicular. So we've got right angles within our picture. And if we kind of separate this out in our mind, what we've got are some right triangles. We've got two sides of the right triangle. We're going to try to find the missing third side. So this takes us back to the Pythagorean theorem. So let's start with this one on the left, finding that length from A to B. Since that X is across from our 90 degree angle, that has to be our C value. So I'm going to set this Pythagorean theorem up as 6 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. Now if we take care of squaring those things on the left hand side, 6 squared is 36 and 12 squared is 144. Then if we add those together we get 180. 
as our x squared value, but we don't want x squared, we want just x. So we have to square root both sides. Now 180 is not a nice perfect square number, so what I'm going to do is break it down. 180 breaks down into 36 and 5. If we square root 36, we get 6, and we can't do anything with the square root of 5, so that just stays as root 5. So that length from A to B is 6 root 5. Now taking a look at that other one from B to C, again we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Since the y is across from the 90, that's going to be our c value this time. So we're going to go 6 squared plus 8 squared equals our y squared. On the left hand side again, we're going to square both of those things. So we get 36 plus 64 equals y squared. Adding those up we get 100 as our y squared value. But again, we don't want y squared, we want just y, so we have to square root both sides. Now in this one, 100 is a nice perfect square value, so our y value from our picture ends up being 10. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.